Hi, everyone, and happy, 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 happy Wednesday. Yes, today is a big day in so many ways. Today marks a day that we all are hoping and praying will represent a new beginning, will represent unity and a peaceful, joyful, love-filled way for all of us to move forward. Oh, take a moment and just take that in. Okay. So in the spirit of a fresh start and in grounding all of us, okay, and just taking in the possibility whew, of this day, let's just take some big, deep, healing, love-filled, joy-filled breaths, okay? So we're going to take four breaths in through the nose, like we always do. We're going to hold our breath for four counts, and then we're going to exhale slowly for five counts. So four, four, five, okay? It helps our nervous system calm down, helps ground us, okay? So inhale love for four. Hold your breath. Exhale five, through the nose. Inhale, love. Hold your breath, smile. Exhale, peace through the nose. One more. Hold your breath. Exhale, five, peace. Okay, so I'm really, really, really excited about our conversation today. So as you know, in the consciousness, wellness, spiritual space, we talk a lot about self-care, about self-healing, about self-love. Well, I'm so excited today to welcome my very dear friend, Jessica Heidi Gandolfi. She's an emotional healing practitioner and a founder of Harmonium LA, which is a very unique one that I've personally been participating in for four years, a very unique spiritual and metaphysical derived healing practice. And what I think Jessica brings very special to this already amazing, amazing modality is that she has 30 plus years as a certified skin and body care expert, a wellness expert. And you know, a lot of people don't know this, but in Europe, when people get um, certified in skin care, it isn't like here in America. They actually go to school a lot longer. They really like dive deep to understand that our skin is our largest organ in our body. And that when our skin is actually showing signs of distress or disease or discomfort, they understand that it's all connected to other things other than the skin. It's understanding that it's all involved in the other organs, right? So I really, um, I believe that Jessica brings something so special to this, like I said, already amazing modality because of her deep understanding of how the body really, uh, how stuff shows up outside. So I'm really excited to um, introduce my dear friend, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Lavinia. Good morning. How are you? I'm so thrilled to be here today of all days. I think it couldn't be more perfect, honestly. It's just absolutely, uh, 
thank goodness we can just oh, do it, take a moment it's beautiful so thanks for having me yes and you, you look so beautiful you are definitely glowing you are shining you are just in your gorgeousness which i love so okay so let's start with jessica can you take a moment to tell us a lot a little bit about your journey like how you got here actually to the US, mm. from the UK, mm. and your career path, you know, and like really how you got to where you are here and now in this moment, because I think it's a really interesting story. Thank you. No, absolutely. And that's the thing. I think the journey, we're all on a journey, aren't we? You know, we're all on this path to learning and healing and being and doing. And everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a journey. But I guess um, going way back to the beginning, you know, my journey, it started in high school. You know, I was 14, probably 14 years old. Um, I was really awkward, honestly, Lavinia. You know, I had terrible skin, really bad acne. I was incredibly overweight. Um, I had a terrible perm. I mean, we're talking back in the 80s and the perm <laughs> was the thing. It was terrible. So I just became this sitting duck for these girls that just wanted to have a bully, someone to, you know, someone to pick on to bully. So I became the target. And, um, you know, so I went through four years of high school at the hands of these girls, you know, emotionally and physically abused by these girls. Mm -hmm. So that's when my journey really started because when I went to my college counselor and she said to me, Jessica, what do you want to be when you grow up? Where, where do you want to do with your life? Honestly, Lavinia, I had no idea. No idea because I had no self-respect. I had no self-esteem. I had no confidence. I had so much self-loathing and self-hatred for my body. Like, I had no idea. What do I want? What am I even worth in this world? Mm -hmm. So it was that point was what really changed everything for me because she, thank goodness for her. She said to me, well, look, why don't we just get you some work experience? Let's get you into a Saturday job or let's do something to see if we can't spark some idea inside of you and so I landed up working in the local beauty salon it's called the beauty spot and it was this cutesy little um, converted chapel in the little village where we lived and I used to go there on a Saturday and so my job was to welcome the clients when they came in and when I wasn't busy with clients I would be dusting the shelves and reorganizing the nail polish and you know I kind of quite enjoyed it and then I got promoted and then my job was to actually help the clients into their sunbed sessions back in the day before we knew how damaging sunbeds were <laughs> you know all the rage and um and I really enjoyed it I enjoyed that connection with people and what I found is that it kind of took me away from where I was at emotionally the stuff that I was dealing with because it gave me a purpose I was looking after somebody else I was helping serve somebody else so that really was how I started so then I ended up at beauty school and as you say you know back in the UK it's very strict it's very lengthy there's so much involved in learning and training to be a skin and body care therapist um, and as it turns out I really enjoyed it and I actually was pretty good at it and so by the time I qualified and left beauty school I had this transportable skill set you know I was internationally accredited and I was 19 years old I was like yes that's it that's it I can go and travel the world and I can live this amazing life and you know I have this career this job where I can literally get a job anywhere in the world and so that's what I did and at the time I didn't see it but now in hindsight and looking back with everything I've learned since then mm -hmm. it wasn't about traveling the world and going to these incredible places it was about trying to escape mm -hmm. from the trauma that I had endured at the hands of these bullies mm -hmm. and so you know wherever I went in the world I had some amazing jobs to the outside well oh my god my friends like you have the most amazing life you know working in Europe and Portugal in Southeast Asia and Australia having these incredible positions within skin and skin and body care industry but underneath all of that, I was really literally dying inside. I was miserable. Like I was so unhappy in myself, but being of service to others and helping other people look and feel amazing took my mind off of that. But of course, behind closed doors, I was a wreck, you know? And I landed up with a very aggressive eating disorder. Um, I ended up drinking socially and then more heavily, more heavily. And, you know, ultimately long and short of it, I spent 25, 30 years of my life trying to tackle these demons, which were all linked to the emotional trauma that I suffered in high school. I didn't realize at the time, but it meant that all I seemed to do, no matter where I ended up in the world, I attracted the wrong type of friendships, the wrong type of relationships. They were abusive, they were toxic, they were very damaging to myself. And you know, I was already in a very deep, dark place and everything I was attracting to my life was just compounding all of that. And I couldn't see it at the time. So I just ended up more and more numbing, numbing here, numbing there, escapist behaviors. Um, Anyway, meet my. I just want to. I just want to uh, share something for our community because we talk a lot about 
your energy and your vibration is what you attract. 100%. So, so guys out there, just like this is a perfect example of she was not um, vibrating at the brightest of vibration. Um, so she was attracting that that negativity. So I just want people to see that who you are like that. Yeah. What you, you attract. So when you're vibrating in that space of shame and guilt and fear and lack of confidence, that is like on the lowest point of the vibrational scale. Yes. And what so within, so without, whatever you are feeling and experiences, that is what you are going to attract and draw into your world. And, and that's it. End of story. It's as simple as that. So in order to shift that, you have to change your vibration. You have to change. But that's very difficult because when you're in that space, it's not as easy as saying, oh, just start thinking positive. It's not that easy. You have to do the work. Um, Why don't you take us through like what was that initial work? Like what was the initial work that you did hmm. um, that actually made like that because I remember the work that I did where right. all of a sudden, like you transform, like you see it. It's like, it's as if your blind spot all of a sudden just gets revealed and you're like, oh, wow. Like, so yeah, and I remember just probably as you do, clear as day. I mean, that point for me was when I was here, you know, so um, I got married, I had twins. We moved to the US, we moved to LA um, 13 years ago now. Um, but sadly, because of all the other emotional trauma that I hadn't dealt with, once we got here and my marriage started to crumble, it started to fail. It was, you know, it was just becoming toxic and, and really not healthy. Um, I had to. Well, make I can't imagine. And again, I don't know your yeah. husband, but I can't imagine that if you were at that lowest port that you actually brought in like a man that was like, you know, so full of light and love and kindness, because normally we we, we get somebody that mirrors our vibration. And if you were in that vibration, yeah. I would say, I mean, that you probably brought in something uh, similar of that. I, I mean, I'm sure he could have worked in himself now and is an amazing man, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to be ready. You have to see yourself and face yourself to start healing yourself. And if you're not ready, but you know, realizing 5,000 miles from friends and family and support network, miserable as hell, and just getting more and more into that numbing behavior, something had to change. You know, we have a choice. We have a choice into a situation and we have a choice out of a situation, but it's up to us. We have to make that choice. Hey, another point, guys, we always have a choice. We can choose. Mm, always, always. Um, and so I chose to get divorced. I, you know, sadly ended the marriage because it wasn't healthy for me, for him, for the kids, for any of us. And so that was the point at which this journey started because I remember waking up one morning, I was 45 years old, sitting in bed. I'm like, is this it? Like I'm 45, I'm divorced, I've got two kids, I'm 5,000 miles away from home and family and friends and network. What, there has to be more, there has to be more. And thank goodness, actually in hindsight, I was here in LA because honestly, Lavinia, we are in the Mecca of health and wellness and having all these tools at our fingertips for living our best life. Um, if I'd have been in London, it may have been a very different story because of course in England, a very stoic, stiff upper lip, everything's fine on the surface, but it's not really fine. If we really go within, it's absolutely, couldn't be further from fine. So thankfully I actually was here because I was able to really take stock and say, okay, what do I need now? What does Jessica, 45 divorced Jessica, single mom, what does she need right now? And it was about looking at healing myself, looking, going back to basics, what do I need? So I, I dove into self-help. I started my foray into self-help, um, self-development, and just really took whatever tool I could find, courses, podcasts, um, workshops, um, events, you know, whatever I could find, books, to try and figure out what is this all about? What is the next 45, 55 years on this planet going to look like for me? because it certainly isn't going to look like it did for the last 45. That I know for sure. And so that's how it all started. Okay, great. So take us through like, okay, we know that there is this definitely this crossroads between like wellness, spirituality, working out, the physical body, the mental body, the emotional body. We know that there is all these little crossroads. So for you, like talk a little bit about what self-care you know, what does it look like to you um, today? Like, how does that come into play? Yeah, I love that because self-care is key, but we don't give it the, um, 
attention and the focus and the respect that it deserves, honestly. You know, self-care, care of self is critical because if we don't take care of ourselves, of our bodies, our home, you know, it's the home of our spiritual body and emotional beings, our time on this planet, if we don't take care of, of that house, then everything around us is going to start to unravel. And I truly believe that there are three pillars to ultimate wellness and health. And that's going to be your emotional health, your physical health, and your mental health. Right. Now, to me, what I've learned over all of these years working with and on myself and with other clients is your emotional health is the crux of all of that. Right. Because for many years, I used to believe it was your physical health. I used to work out. I would be doing a gazillion soul cycle classes a day and running and training and doing all of these things. I thought I was super healthy, but right. emotionally, I was a wreck. You know, yeah. mentally, I thought I was really healthy because I was reading, listening to podcasts, but emotionally, I was a wreck. So what I have learned, especially over the last few years, is that if our emotional health is not strong, then the rest of those foundations, you know, the rest of that building will start to crack and crumble and we're going to have a huge amount more work to do. So working on our emotional body is key, in my opinion. Um, and so self-care, care of self, it has to start with you. And I think self-care and self-healing, especially, are intrinsically linked and you can't begin to heal yourself unless you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. And so that's, again, that's the real key, but how do we even begin to do that? You know, and we start to do that by going within. Yeah. And that is the hardest work that we will ever have to do in our lives because it's the scariest. Yeah, for sure. For we will sure. ever have to do because when you go within, when you really go within, when you stop and look and really go inside, it scares the crap out of you because you see everything. You see it all, warts and all, it's all in there. And you have to face it to heal it. Right. And that's the hardest thing because we don't want to face it because it hurts. It's painful. We're ashamed. We're guilty. We're scared. Whatever those emotions are that come up when we go in are the ones we have to face. And that's why a lot of people will just numb, 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 numbing through drinking, numbing through shopping, numbing through sex, through, you know, through eating, through whatever your escapist way is to right. avoid facing that reality. It's a much easier option because doing the work is, is the hard work, but it's worth it. And, you know, it, like a lot of times people will say, to me, like they don't really understand that going in doesn't mean just meditating. It's like doing a personal inventory, like getting down to understanding. Like I know for me, this last, I would say even like this last four months, self-care for me is speaking my truth. Mm. Like that, I mean, like, you know, it isn't getting a mani and pedi. It isn't getting a massage. Like it's being able when something makes me feel uncomfortable or unaligned, it's that, and like, and I, and how I know it is, if I get off the phone with somebody or I walk out of the room with my husband and I'm in my head saying, oh, whatever, gosh, I can't believe he, I didn't, why doesn't he? I didn't take care of myself. Yeah. If I'm in a self-talk, yeah. then I didn't. And, and so I walk back in the room and I say, honey, I realized I haven't shared with you the, how I'm feeling. Right. And so, so for me right now, self-care is being able to, if my son says something that makes me feel uncomfortable in the past because I was a pleaser and I, I was a peacemaker, yeah. You know, um, I might not have said, hey, see, you know, why did you say that? That made me feel a certain way. And instead, I would have been like, you know what? The kid's working so hard. He's hungry. He hasn't had lunch. I would have given a ton of excuses yeah. to not just deal with it. Yeah. Well, and, that's it. Then I, and then I'd be in my head like, oh, my God, I'm such a good mom. I do so much for him. Like, and, and then you're not down with spiral because right. so by, by not speaking your truth, care of yourself, you're not yes. taking care. And like that for me, like self-care is not just mani petty meditating people. Like there's so many other layers of it. It's like getting down to like a lot of times it's getting down to the hard questions that we didn't want to ask, you know, that's it. It's getting down to the real cellular level. 
what is that for you? And for you, it's speaking your truth because when you speak your truth, you're speaking your emotion. Yes, exactly. You're releasing that emotion. And when you release that emotion, you feel free and you feel lighter. If you don't do that, that emotion will live in your system and it has to come out somewhere. So if it's not right. verbally, it's going to manifest some form in the physical. Right. So every physical manifestation, every physical disturbance that we have is a result, a direct result of some emotional disturbance that we right. are not facing and dealing with. Yes. So I think speaking your truth is huge and so yeah. powerful. And like that for me, like, like if somebody would say to me again right now, what is such a big thing in self-care? It's it's powerful communication, loving, speaking your truth in a loving, kind, generous way, but authentically. It, it's not saying it like accusing, even overly opinionated, gentle, like gentle and calm, you know? Learning, yeah, absolutely. Because it's learning to respond, not react. Absolutely. And so that's the other piece of it. You know, when you go within and you look at what you need and you feel it in your body, you know, for me, a huge piece of self-care is boundaries. Absolutely. We, and yeah. right now, we don't have any. There are no boundaries. Like we are at home and we've got kids at home, husbands at home, family members at home. We don't necessarily have the space to go and take time out for ourselves. So mm -hmm. our boundaries are shot. But if we don't take time to draw a line in the sand, like say, this is my time for me right now to figure out what I need to do for me so I can show up as the best version of myself for you, right. then it all is going to begin to unravel. So there's a very fine line, I feel at the moment, between being of service and being a servant ah. with our family members. Yes, and absolutely. And when we're constantly being servants, guess what? We are depleting our own levels of self and abundance and joy because we then become resentful. And then when we become resentful, we start to get frustrated and then everything again will flow from there. So it's so crucial to make sure that we give ourselves time to figure out what is our best version of self-care. So for you speaking your truth, for me, it could be boundaries, for somebody else, it could be having that time, quiet time, doing their meditation, whatever. Well, you know, I remember doing a workshop <laughs> and I said, the, I, the workshop I did was on the power of self-care by saying no. Oh. And yeah. it's just like, because so often women have such a hard time saying no, like, yeah. and it was interesting because I remember this was years ago, um, my son's coach, he, one time I said, no, I'm good. And he started laughing and I said to him, what's so funny? And he's like, I just noticed like you, uh, the way you say no. And I'm like, how do I say no? And he's just like, you're always like, no, I'm good. And he said, but there are times like I've noticed like people were asking you like big things and you could just say, no, no, thanks. I'm good. And you didn't give an explanation. You didn't go into a song and dance of why you're saying no, you just said it. And he said, I don't think I've ever watched people say it with so much like say no with so much like happiness well that's because <laughs> no is a complete sentence yeah, yeah. And, and we forget that and we feel that we have to justify it if we say no or no thank you oh because xyz there always has to be a reason why we can't do it but actually no yeah. no is a full sentence and we owe that to ourselves sometimes we don't need to but society is just and we're so you know train that we have to always give a reason and an explanation as to why we don't want to do something but actually we don't we right. really don't and again that's so empowering when you can embrace that and realize that no thank you that's enough that's all you need yeah it's really um and also the other thing that i think for me is self-care is not managing someone else's experience mm -hmm. and i know as a woman like sometimes it's like you not always telling someone the truth because you're anticipating that they're going to be uncomfortable with it. Mm. So it's like, it's like you can't manage anyone's experience. Like if I'm going to tell my, I actually had a conversation with my son yesterday that was, you know, like not the easiest conversation to have, but you know what? I had it because, you know, I wanted to be authentic with him. 
about something and I didn't overthink it because I knew that my heart was pure Mm. and I wasn't worrying about managing his response. I knew that he could handle it. He's got the emotional intelligence to be able to handle that response. But the truth is, as a parent, if you don't give them that they won't build that emotional intelligence. Like that doesn't happen by a magic wand saying, okay, you're going to have magic. You're going to have emotional intelligence. Like mm. that's it. Like that is actually it's a muscle. It's a muscle that has to be built. Yeah. And so often as parents, we're always so worried about, we don't want to upset them. We don't want to hurt them. We don't want this. So we're actually dumbing down their emotional intelligence. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, yes, but I think that's also as much as like not jumping into the future like oh well if I say this how is he going to respond and then how you know automatically you're jumping into that space of anxiety because you're worrying about what's going to happen and it hasn't even got there yet could turn out to be a million times better than you could possibly imagine you know so staying present this is what I have to say I'm going to say clearly and with love and with grace and with ease and what will need to be will be from that and not worrying about how that might manifest or show up as a result of being authentic and being unapologetic about it too. Yes. We do not need to apologize for being us. Exactly. No. But like you said, if you're not connected to the self-love that you have, it's hard because then you're kind of like faking it. But I tell people, look, girl, you got to fake it till you make it because sometimes you just got to fake that level of confidence so that you totally. can actually do it, you know? And, 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 and also realize that you're going to be a little clumsy. In the beginning, like it's like it's like if you go out and you're doing new, like you jump into a dance class. I mean, I'm a dancer, and even still, if I jump jump into a dance class that I've never done, mm. I'm awkward. Like I don't know the warm up, I don't know the, the the body rolls the way they do it. Like you're awkward. So it's no different in in when you're starting to like up your game of communication or up your game of taking care of yourself emotionally. You're going to be awkward in it. You know, like. Because you, you, you have to start somewhere. You have to start with what you have, where you're at, you know, do what you can with what you've got, where you're at. So if you don't have the tools and if you don't have all the resources that perhaps some, you know, like we do here in LA, you know, what do we have? And let's just think about doing so. Let's just move the needle just a teeny bit. Let's just take baby steps as long as we start, because the road that we start on is not the road that we end up on. Right. Anything we do in life, nothing. But we have to start somewhere because unless we start, we're going to be in that space of stasis. Mm. Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to be any better. It's just going to be the same. So wherever it is that we're at, we just have to take the first step, baby steps, baby steps. We don't need to be running the marathon off the bat. We just need to start building up to that. And that's really crucial too, reminding ourselves of that. Well, let's talk a little bit about the harmonium. No, I know I've, I started doing um, Harmonium years ago and the way I always explained it to people, because people always knew the word Reiki, right? Like I, they know the word Reiki and energy work. And, and so I always like to be relatable when you're explaining something. And I always said like Harmonium was like, it was like energy work for the nervous system. Mm-hmm. Yep. And really our nervous system controls so much more than we even understand. So, and then what I found for me, and I'm sure there were so many other things that happened, but what I found for me with harmonium, like I, my, my body just, my mind actually, like that monkey mind kind of shut off, you know, that monkey mind that we have was like, it was like as if, I don't know, like, I kind of felt like it was as if I had done like a 12 day silent retreat meditating all day, but yet I got this hour of harmonium and it really like, it settled everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I felt like mentally, like things that might've, you know, um, irritated me or frustrated me, like it didn't, I was just like, oh, that's good. Um, and then on my body, again, my body just felt calmer. Like I, and I also didn't feel like I am a busy bee. So I am definitely aware that when I, if I'm dealing with a little anxiety or something that's uncomfortable, it's like, I get busy. Yeah. 
you yeah. know, um, I just kind of, I, I start working out and then eat, you That's know. That's your way of numbing, not having to face Yeah, them. like, I mean, I feel, uh, people always said, well, thank God you're, at least what you were numbing with was healthy. But, you know, truthfully, at some point it was, yeah. I definitely went down that road. But um, so kind of talk to us about it. And and what can people, because really, you know, our conversation is always about tools that people can do at home. So talk to us a little bit about it, because I do think that it's definitely something that for people to do a couple of sessions is always amazing. And I know they're doing just, your guys are doing distant healing and stuff. And from what I haven't done it, but from what I've heard from people that have done it, it's they've really, it has been so hugely helpful. So share with us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So harmonium, um, and it's interesting, like you say, like I've been in health and wellness and skincare for 30 years, never heard of it, never heard of it ever. And I've done literally every single possible modality you could think of, and I'd never heard of harmonium. And so I came across it. I, and I say to people, harmonium will find you when you're ready to receive it, because it is a next level of healing. It's a spiritual divine healing system. And if you're not ready for it, it's not going to resonate for you. Mm -hmm. So I feel that you will find it when it's when you're ready to receive it. And that's kind of what happened with me. I had tried everything else. Nothing else was working. Nothing. Therapy and this treatment and that treatment, absolutely everything and nothing worked. And I remember having a session with Dr. Levery, who's the founder of the Harmonium Healing System. And he said to me, you just need Harmonium. And I said, I have no idea what you're talking about, but whatever, if that's going to work, I'm up, I'm in. And so I started having, as you did, you know, as a client and I had very intensive. I had four months, really intensive. I had two to three sessions a week for four months. Now that's a lot, wow. it's yeah. a lot but I was dealing with a lot. And sure. literally after those four, four months, everything shifted, everything. Because as you say, you're working on the nervous system. Harmonium is working directly on the spine, traditionally, directly on the spine. The spine is an extension of the brain, as we know, and that will regulate the entire body. So when we're working with harmonium, we're dealing with the entire neurological system. We're recalibrating the entire neurological system. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that with light touch. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's metaphysical. Yes, it's divine and spiritual. But at the same time, we are working very, very lightly. Now, when we touch the body very, very lightly, super gentle touch, you are activating that vagus nerve within the body. And the vagus nerve will send messages to your body, I'm safe. So when your body feels safe, it can drop into a really deep state of relaxation. So we're activating the parasympathetic side of the nervous system because 90% of the time we're running around in the sympathetic fight or flight mode. There's so much, we just have to turn on the TV. We just have to watch social media. We just have to read the newspaper or go outside. And we are overloaded with stress and our nervous systems are shot. So harmonium, the idea behind it is that it's activating the self healing capacity of the body by taking you into a really deep state of relaxation. And then from that space, your body can figure out what it needs to do to heal itself. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, the only way to get permanent healing is to heal something at root level. Now, a lot of the time, we don't even know what that might be. I mean, 90% of what hurts is we don't see. We're emotional beings, so we don't see the emotion. We feel it, but we don't see it. And so we have no idea how we're supposed to even begin to figure that out. So harmonium will allow us our bodies to figure out what we need to do. We're very clever. We're designed to heal ourselves at the end of the day. That's sure. what we're taught to do, as yeah. you know. Um, so harmonium just allows that to happen because you get into a state of, state of deep relaxation, your mind can figure it out. It's raising your awareness. It's raising your consciousness. And what you will find is that you will start to see people, situations or experiences that are not serving your highest good. Mm -hmm. And those people, situations, experiences will start to slip away very gracefully harmonium is a very graceful it's a very it's, it's just such a beautiful healing system that you don't it's simple you don't need to really do anything healing shouldn't be difficult life is difficult enough so to just be able to lie down for 45 minutes and allow your body to get into this really deep state of relaxation and start to heal itself it's beautiful um so again i say to people unless you're ready to receive it, it's probably not going to resonate with you. And the thing about it is that once you start to have harmonium, something, you, your life is going to change. So I say to people, if you're happy where you're at, if you're happy just surviving right now, do not have harmonium. Because the minute you start to have harmonium, your life is going to change. It just, it purely will, in the best possible way. But in order to get to the best possible place, you know, you have to go sometimes through a healing crisis. So it will bring up 
a lot of stuff that needs to be healed because to heal something, you have to see it. You have to see it to heal it. You have to face it to heal it. So harmonium will do that. Um, but the other side of that is beautiful because you then become to just seeing things with a very different lens, becoming much more conscious about the choices you're making, the situations that you are in, the people you are surrounding yourself with. Um, it's amazing. Oh, I just want one right now. I'm just like, I think I need her money. <laughs> we all need it, but we're not all ready to receive it. So, um, yeah, but now we have this distance version. Obviously, COVID took away all of the ability for us to do in person. So, you know, we do have this distance version, which again, it's a whole nother level, but it's been so powerful. We do it over Zoom and we're working with the fact that we're all energy, we're all connected. And so it's possible for us to heal at distance. It really truly is. There are so many um, studies to show that that can happen and it is effective. Um, um, but with regard to clients and what they can do at home, you know, it's about setting yourself a few little tasks that you have to have a to do list, because if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Yeah. So let's create a little toolkit of what we can do to help to get us into that space of really looking within and doing what we can with what we've got where we're at right now. It's difficult. Um, and there's, there's three things, really, the key three things for my clients is breath breath work which you obviously did at the beginning it's crucial so I have three different breath work practices and depending on where you're at and what you're doing you can choose one of the three that resonates with you because your mind will always follow the breath yes so you can slow the breath you can slow the mind and then you can start to think more clearly and you can start to respond instead of react and that shifts everything so breath is huge um, writing is huge and that can be anything. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not a writer. I don't need to write. It doesn't matter. It's not about what you're writing on the page. It's the act of expressing those emotions, as you said about speaking your truth. So writing, some people will journal. Some people will do a gratitude journal. Some people will write music or songs, or maybe it's stream of consciousness writing three pages every morning when you wake up before you do anything else. Um, for me, um, writing was an integral part of my healing journey. I wrote my children's picture book as part of my healing journey, because it was an outlet for me to put onto paper and release all those emotions that had been part of that marriage, that toxic environment that I had been in for so long. And to be able to write that book, to serve an orphanage, to donate all of that to orphans, to serve others, mm -hmm. takes you out of where you're at and it gives you something else to focus your attention on. And that in itself is very healing. So whatever the healing writing journey might look for, just whatever it is, five minutes a day, it doesn't matter, whatever resonates. Um, and the last one is meditation. And so that can be silent meditation. It can be a moving meditation. It can be a guided meditation with one of the apps that we can get these days. It could be um, with music or mantras, it, whatever works for you. And like we said earlier, it doesn't matter where you start, just start somewhere. And using those tools daily, mm -hmm. discipline. You have to have a discipline, like anything. You know, yeah. you're not going to get that change unless you put the effort in. You have to have the willpower and the discipline. You have to want to make that change. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, at times like this, I mean, again, like people are searching, like, because we're in such this, everything, we're in such uncertainty. And that uncertainty is creating a crazy amount of anxiety for people. I mean, my phone gets blown up with, hey, Lavinia, what can I be taking for anxiety? Hey, Lavinia, what can I be taking natural for sleep? And I'm just like, there's other things before popping stuff into the mouth. Even though it's natural, let's like do things to you know, together, like, like, let's do the behavioral, yeah. some of this, the little bit of breath, a little bit of writing, mm -hmm. and all you know, right, a little bit of, you know, tryptophan, a little bit of melatonin. Yes, but it's, it's not just, you know, I, I really believe the things that you're talking about really brings um, some inner peace. And that's what we're all, yeah. you know, and stress, stress release. I mean, stress, I mean, I can't tell you, how many young people that I know, and I say young, I mean, in their fifties that have literally had heart attacks during this COVID. Yeah. And some of them massive, like if they did not get to the hospital immediately, they were actually physically, they were working out. Yeah. Um, and then boom. And, you know, 
Uh, well, I had shingles that. before Christmas. I'm 49 years old. I'm young. I shouldn't have shingles. I had a shingles for a month. And it's the, the, the nervous system overload. Yeah. You know, and one of the things I say to clients is, you know, first, they say, I don't have time to meditate. I've got the kids. I've got the husband. I've got this, that, the other, the work. When we wake up in the morning, nine times out of 10, the first thing we will do is pick up our phones, emails, social media. What do I need to do? Da, 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 da. And we are immediately stressing out our nervous systems. If yeah. we just stop just take 15 minutes the minute we wake up don't even pick up your phone just wake up and just sit in your thoughts and maybe write or maybe meditate or maybe light a candle and just sit and just think about what do I need today for me yes and sometimes people say well I, I can't meditate I can't just sit in silence but it's a practice and the more you do it it's incredible what will come through in those quiet times before anything else um, it's so powerful because it will set you up on the day ahead. And if you can't think of anything right now, just think about what am I grateful for? Like we all have something to be grateful for or what happened yesterday that was so wonderful that I really want to recreate or what do I want to look to achieve today? Like where am I at right now? And having that time. And it is true. Like I have had, I mean, I have a meditation practice. I have a, a writing and it's interesting, I'm gonna just grab my book. I, I was invited into this group where I'm doing the writer's way. Love that book. And, and I've done this in the past. I did it about, um, I don't I wanna say like 10 years ago uh, mm -hmm. with another group. And um, so at first when I was invited, I was like, oh, and I've already done that. I definitely had that moment where I had to catch myself and be like, you know, ego. But um, so, I committed to it and it was interesting because I, um, I, they, of course, you know, it's the morning pages. And even though I've journal, the direction that they give you on this is just a little bit different than the way I've been journaling. And you know what, just making that shift, I have already see, again, it's, I'm still doing three pages, but now I'm doing it with a little bit of a different intention that's going towards this and I mean it's really been amazing in one week on some of the changes that I've seen in the expansiveness and seeing things a little differently and um so if you're allowing you're opening up those channels and you're allowing spirit to to flow through you you're allowing your creativity to flow through you right. um you know and five minutes of positive thinking or positivity. And if you're doing that, that can be part of that. You know, it will offset 18 hours of negative thinking. So even if you do five minutes a day that people might say, well, it's not enough. It is enough because it will change the brain chemistry. It will change the way you look at things like you say and the, the perception that you have of things. I remember reading something, there was um, a study done that said um, spiritually healthy people live longer lives and people with a higher level of spiritual health will have um, higher levels of emotional health. So when you say spirituality, a lot of people say, oh, it's also woo woo, but it's not, you know, writing, creative writing, that's a spiritual act. Meditating, breathing, it's all spiritual because we're spiritual. It doesn't even have to be like, cause you know, that could be intimidating creative writing, but like, I'm just writing like, how am I feeling? You know, like, what am I feeling? How am I feeling today? What is my, like, what is my wish for my day? Like, yeah. if I, you know, like, it's just changing some things. And like, there is one part of chapter one where, um, because I am writing a book right now and I have a writer that I write with and I have this story, like, I'm not a good writer. And even though she keeps telling me, Linnea, you're a great writer. I have this story. And like, in the book, you go back to what was the root cause of you thinking you weren't a good writer. And you know, it's crazy because I remember like my third grade teacher, I wrote something and she wrote, you need work on grammar, exclamation point, exclamation point. Yeah. And the tone in which she said it was basically saying, you're not good in grammar. Right, exactly. And instead That's of like a okay kind way of saying, hey, Lavinia, the story was amazing. I want it like, let's work on this a little bit. You know, um, it was very negative. And that like, I didn't realize, but that like stuck in my heart. That yeah. became like something. So I kind of kept this story going that I'm not a good writer. But when I got through to that and I saw it, it was like so clear. I was like, whoa. And then I made new affirmations and I have them actually posted all around yeah. 
office right now about that I'm, I'm a great writer. I expect my, I express myself fully. And now, like all of a sudden, my morning pages, I'm like, I'm doing five and six pages instead of, you know, two or three pages. So, exactly. like, just don't start, it. So instead point, of worrying about what you're writing, you're just allowing it to flow through because yeah. you know you are a great writer. Everybody, we all are. We all have a story right. to tell. Everybody's capable of writing a book. Everybody has, we've all got a story. And someone needs to hear our story because it's going to help somebody else. So forget about, oh, I'm not a good writer, you know, whatever we tell ourselves. It's like, how can I help somebody else with what I have been through? Not, oh, why did that happen to me? But, oh, that happened for me so that I can help somebody else that might be going through a similar thing. And so how can I do that? And, you know, once you start something new, like you start something new, it, it just does, it creates expansiveness. I, I can't explain it, but I know even just this week, there's been definitely things that have shifted and I know it's all from that. So I, I do think it's that starting something, yeah. shifting it a little bit, if you already have it, um, so the last question is, you know, so often we hear from people, I don't have time. Mm. Oh my God, like, like, I just don't have time in this. That's not what I do. Like, like, what are the like things that you could say to somebody? Okay, how do we really help people make that happen? Like with your clients? You, you have to set yourself up a structure. You have to be disciplined about it. How much do you want it? How much do you want to change? Like we said in the beginning, you, it's choice. So you can choose to stay where you are or you can choose to be somewhere else, but it's up to you. We are in control of our own bodies, mindset, destiny, period. It, how, how much do we want it? Because if we really want something, we will go out of our ways to find that and make the time for that to happen. Time is like the biggest commodity and time puts so much pressure on us. Oh, I don't have time for myself because I've got to do X, Y, Z. But we do, we have to make it part of our daily routine. Now, if that means waking up 15 minutes earlier, then so be it. Right. You know, one of the big things, which I think is, is, is what I have used all of the time during my healing the last four or five years is walking. And I know you're a big walker too, because you can go for a walk and it might be for five minutes, for 20 minutes, for an hour. And that gives you time for you. And it doesn't matter where you live, if you're in a city, if you're on the beach, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you can go outside. It costs you nothing except your time. And that's what you need. You need the time to think. And by walking outside, it will give you clarity. Now, whether you walk in silence or whether you listen to music or like you say, inspirational podcasts or talks, or you just think about you, or you just start to become so much more grateful and see how well you are living and how good your life is because you will see other things on your walk that will inspire you or remind you that where you're at actually isn't all that bad, but it gives you that time. It gives you that time to focus. So I think it's about carving out time, setting boundaries, writing a, a plan and sticking to it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. And you know, I um, I would also invite people on their walk to actually leave this home. <laughs> like, don't even take it. Like we need more time to really yeah. unplug. Um, and, and I mean, look, I think podcasts are great. I think listening, but I think also like, just being able to walk and do like what I would call walking meditation and observe, like look at the trees and the different color greens and, you know, get present to the, I mean, the different smells. I mean, even um, I walk around my community a lot and it's like, I'm, I'm always floored by all of the different senses from mm. one house to the next. I right. never like, I never smelled that before because in truth, I was usually on my phone, either, you know, listening to a podcast or maybe even listening to Nam. But yeah. somehow when I was doing, you know, Ramadas, I was at walking, I wasn't, I was missing some stuff in that. So that I found that, yeah, that time to be helpful, to be able to just kind of do a walking meditation. And especially for people that can't sit, like they'll say, I can't, I find, um, meditation more stressful 
then because some people do and but that's good so do the walking meditation because yeah. we move ourselves you know we're, we're emotional beings and you know energy in motion we have to move and especially when we're stuck at home and we're zooming all the time and we're not doing what we used to do get outside and walk because it will change yeah. your emotion so if you're feeling funky or if you're feeling frustrated or if you feel like you're going to absolutely lose it get outside immediately and walk because it changes the whole dynamic yeah. it will change the environment come back five minutes later and everything will have shifted in a positive way. Well, this was a great, great talk. I uh, First of all, I love seeing you like this. It fills my heart with all your beauty and brightness and health. And congratulations. I mean, really, congratulations Thank you. for taking this on and doing the work and then sharing it yeah. with everyone. Because I always feel like those really are the best teachers. Like uh, mm -hmm. the best teachers are the ones that kind of like, suffered through the pain of something and came out on the other side and even though you come out on the other side it's not like okay now i don't have to work on myself like you oh, still are and it's you know it's ongoing and and you know i just know that so many people um are gonna that you're really gonna be able to help people and that makes me like so happy for you because i know how much that means to you in your heart to be able to, to help people. Yes, I, I say to myself, you know, I didn't go through everything I went through to die with that inside of me. Like it's, I went through everything I went through so I can help other people. So when right. clients come to me and they're dealing with divorce or if they're dealing with eating disorders or if they're dealing with addiction, if they're dealing with trauma, I can empathize. I've been there. I have been where they are. And so I know when they don't believe me and they're in the depths of it and they're like, oh, I don't think this is going to get any better. I can say hand on heart. I trust me, trust me. I know this to be true because I have been you. And so that's, that's my mission. It's like, I have to bring this mission to fruition, Lavinia, because that's the reason I went through all of these things is yeah. so I can help other people. It's my And it's so beautiful because that will be your legacy. Yeah. You know, and that is just, that is just so inspiring, you know? So thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So thank you. And thank you everyone for tuning in today. I'm really excited about our conversation next week. We're actually going to bring on some um, conversation with my people's favorites. And we're actually going to talk about the virus. Um, we're going to talk about the vaccine because again, my phone is getting completely um, inundated with people wanting to know, Lavinia, are you go doing the vaccine? Lavinia, should I do the vaccine? I'm like, ah, I can't be telling you to do the vaccine. But you know what? I think we'll have a conversation about that. Like, how do we choose? Choose. How do we choose powerfully, well-informed, and feel really good about our choice in taking this vaccine? Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week.